Hi students, today's topic is stoichiometry and limiting reagent. So before we start with the topic, we need to know what is stoichiometry. So coming to the definition, stoichiometry is the quantitative relationship. As you can see here, it is a quantitative relation between various reactants and products in terms of mass, volume, mass, molecules. So we need to understand the statements uh, in terms of a reaction first. For example, we have A plus 2 moles of B giving 3 moles of C. So, how are this A, B and C re related to each other? We can say that 1 mole of A is reacting with 2 moles of B to give 3 moles of C. Now, as we can relate it with moles, we will be able to relate it with volume, mass and molecules as well. So, this is meant by stoichiometry. It is nothing but all the reactants and the products will have a quantitative relationship between them. Now, this entire topic, stoichiometry and limiting reagent, I have classified into two cases. First is case 1. Case 1 is information. Now, mainly in stoichiometry and limiting region, we will be given uh, numericals. So, how to identify that when we will be applying stoichiometry concept and when we will be applying limiting reagent concept? So, there are two cases. First case is when the information is given about only one reactant or one product. That time, we will be following the stoichiometric concept. We will come to limiting reagent later. First, we will be understanding how to go proceed with the stoichiometry numericals. Now, we will be understanding with the help of one example. Let's say we have this particular equation. CH4 plus O2 is giving CO2 plus H2O. This is a combustion reaction of methane. Let's balance it uh, 2H2O. Correct? So, this is the equation that has been given to us. Now, according to stoichiometry, I can say that, are, uh -huh, correct. According to stoichiometry, I can say that 1 mole of methane is reacting with 2 moles of O2 to give 1 mole of CO2 and 2 moles of water. So, this is the basic relation between all the reactants and products in terms of moles. Now, if I have related it with moles, then I can relate it with three other things. Mass, molecules, as well as volume. Now, this we have already done. Moles is equal to weight upon molecular weight. So, from that I can write weight is equal to N into molecular weight. Similarly, I can do the same thing for number of molecules as well as volume. So, N will be equal to moles into Na and volume at STP in liters will be equal to moles into 22.4. So, I can find out the relation like whatever moles are given here I have to write it in terms of weight molecules and volume very easy we have already done this we have done the practice session as well so how, one mole of CH4 will be equal to how, how much mass of CH4 moles is one molecular weight of CH4 is 12 plus 4 that is 16 so it will be 16 grams. So, similarly we will find for the other three also. 2 moles of O2 will be how much? 2 moles of O2 will be 2 into and the mass of O2 is 32. 32 grams. So, 2 moles, 1 mole of O2 weighs 32 grams. So, 2 moles will be weighing 64 grams. So, I can say that 16 grams of methane is reacting with 64 grams of O2 to give 1 mole CO2. So, 1 mole CO2 means how much mass? 
24 grams of CO2 and 2 moles of water. 1 mole is 18 grams. So, 2 moles will be 36 grams. So, I can say this is the relation in terms of our mass. Okay, this is the relation in terms of or we can say the stoichiometry in terms of mass. Now, we have to find out the stoichiometry in terms of molecules. Again, same thing. 1 mole contains Na molecules. So, I can say Na molecules of CH4, CH4 will react with 2 Na molecules of O2 to give Na molecules of CO2 and 2 Na molecules of water. This is the stoichiometry in terms of our molecules. Now, what it will be in terms of volume? 1 mole is equivalent to 22.4 liters. So, it will be 22.4 liters of methane reacts with 2 into 22.4 liter because this is 2 moles. So, it will be 44.8 liters of O2 to give 22.4 liters of CO2 because it is 1 mole plus 44.8 liters of H2O. If you have understood this entire table, then you have understood stoichiometry. Now, each one of them I can relate among each other. I can say that 16 grams of CH4 will give 44 grams of CO2. I am relating CH4 and CO2. Okay. So, 16 grams of CH4 will give 44 grams of CO2. I can say 16 grams of CH4 will give Na molecules of CO2. And also I can say 16 grams of CH4 will give 1 mole of CO2. Or I can also say it will give 22.4 liters of CO2. Like this, anything on this particular table can be connected or related to anything. I can say 64 grams of O2 will give 44.8 liters of H2O. Or I can say 22.4 liters of CH4 will be reacting with. This is giving. Why giving? Because H2O was in the product side and O2 was in the reactant side. Now, I can relate to reactant also. 22.4 liters of CH4 will be reacting with 2 Na molecules of O2. So, if you have understood this entire correlation, this is what stoichiometry is. Now, coming to the questions, let's say they have given a question like, how much volume of CO2 at STP is evolved on heating 200 grams of CaCO3? Now, whenever we see, you can see here only the information is given regarding only one particular reactant or product. Any other information can you see? No. Only they have given the information regarding calcium carbonate. First things first, we have to write the formula. I mean the equation. CaCO3, uh, heat, we are heating it. So, definitely when we heat calcium carbonate, we get calcium oxide plus CO2. This is our equation. So, I can easily see that I will first write down what they are asking how much volume of CO2 at STP from uh, mass. So, I will write the relation of mass and relation of volume. So, mass. So, here I can see 1 mole of CaCO3 is giving 1 mole of CaO and 1 mole of CO2. What is the mass of calcium carbonate? 100 grams. So, 100 grams of calcium carbonate is giving how much of uh, CaO? Uh, this will give 44 grams of CO2. That I know. Okay, I am not concerned with uh, calcium oxide right now because they have not asked that in the numerical. So, I can see in terms of uh, mass, 
100 grams will give 44 grams. Okay, very good. So, I can say 22.4 liters can give how much? And also CaCO3 is not a gas. So, we can ignore this part. Although, if we had to connect, then this was the correct uh, form of the volume. Now, 1 mole of CO2 is nothing but 22.4 liters. So, I can clearly see that I can relate this with this that 100 grams of CaCO3 is giving 22.4 liters of CO2 at STP. Now, simple unitary method, 100 grams is giving 22.4 liters. So, 200 grams will give how much? 22.4 divided by 100 into 200. That will be our 44.8 liters. Simple. This will be our answer. So, 200 grams of calcium carbonate on heating will give us 44.8 liters of CO2 at STP. I hope you have understood this. One more thing we will do. Let's write one equation for that. Let's say um, glucose C6H12O6. We are adding oxygen into it and it will give us 6CO2 plus 6H2 and here we will have 6O2. Correct? So, this is the uh, reaction of glucose photosynthesis uh, equation if I am not wrong yes correct only uh, right now they are asking me that I want to produce 88 grams of CO2 so for producing 88 grams of CO2 how much glucose in mass will be required how much of glucose will be required simple again we have just to write the relation stoichiometry in terms of mass that's all we need to do now first we will see that glucose what is the mass of glucose 180 grams 180 grams of glucose gives 6 into 44 grams of co2 one one mole will be how much 44 so, if it is 6 moles, then it will be 6 into 44. No need of calculating it right now. Wait. 180 grams is giving 6 into 44 grams of CO2. So, we can like we can reverse it and say that 6 into 44 grams of CO2 is being produced by 180 grams of glucose. So, 88 grams of CO2 will be produced by 180 upon 6 into 44 into 88. Now, that's why I told you don't uh, calculate this. See, this is cancelling. So, 2, 3, so 60 grams of glucose. So, this 88 gram of CO2 is produced by how much grams of glucose? 60 grams of glucose. So, how do we need to approach stoichiometry questions? If you know this table, whatever they are asking, if they are asking volume from mass, then you have to write these two columns, rows. Okay. So, once you write the correct relation, correct correlation between each one of the reactants they are asking, your job is done. Then you have to apply simple unitary method to proceed further. I hope it is clear. So, this was our case 1 where information is given about only one reactant or one product. This was about stoichiometry. Now, coming to limiting reagent. So, you can see case 2 here. Information regarding two or more reactants they have given. What to do in that case? That case we will be applying limiting reagent concept okay limiting reagent concept now what is limiting reagent so this is our case 2 
So seeing the numerical, if one in one reactant or product information is given, that comes under stoichiometry. We will not uh, put limiting reagent concept there. But whenever we see that information is given regarding two reactants, two or more reactants, then definitely there will be limiting reagent concept applied. Now, what is limiting reagent that we need to know? The reactant, the reactant or reagent, we can say, which is consumed first, which is consumed first, Matlab, which gets over first in a chemical reaction, that is called a limiting reagent. Okay, that is called a limiting reagent. For example, you are eating something. Uh, in India, we generally eat uh, roti, chapati, sabzi. So, suppose uh, sabzi is getting over first, then our sabzi will be limiting reagent. But if roti is getting over, then roti will be our limiting reagent. Simple. Whichever is getting over first in a chemical reaction, that will be our limiting reagent. Now, how to find out the limiting reagent that we need to know. So, suppose we have been given A plus B. Let us say 2A plus 3B is giving C. Okay, like this they have given. Now, let us say they have told in the question that they have given you 5 moles of A and uh, let us say 6 moles of B. They have given you. So, now how will you find the limiting reagent? Which one is consumed first? So, here you need to find moles upon stoichiometric coefficient. These, these coefficients, the coefficients that we put for balancing, those are known as stoichiometric coefficients. So, now N upon stoichiometric coefficient we have to find for both, for A as well as B. And whosoever's n by stoichiometric coefficient. So, let us say I am telling uh, n upon stoichiometric coefficient of A is lesser than that of n by stoichiometric coefficient of B. That will not be correct in this I think. But let us see. Uh, if this is true, then A is the limiting reagent. So, whosoever n upon stoichiometric coefficient ratio is less, that will be our limiting reagent. Now, let us see what happens here. 2A, so what is the stoichiometric coefficient of A? That is 2. How many moles of A is given? 5. So, what will be n upon SC for A? It will be 5 upon 2, that is our 2.5. Let us find out for B, stoichiometric coefficient for B is equal to 3 and NB is given as 6. So, N by SC of B will be equal to 6 upon 3 that is 2. Now, clearly we can see that N upon SC of B is lesser than that of N upon SC of A. So, which one will be the limiting reagent here? B will be the limiting reagent. So, that means whenever we will be reacting these two, B will get over first. B will be consumed first. So, whichever is the limiting reagent, that will be consumed entirely in the reaction and this A will be left in excess. A will be left in excess. Okay. So, who, whosoever N by SC is more, for this A is more, that will be left after the reaction is over. Okay. Now, we will see the questions regarding this. Let us say first one. Question. 2SO2 plus O2 
is giving 2SO3. This is the equation. Now they have told, they have given you 6 moles of SO2 and they have given 32 grams of O2. O2. Okay, 32 grams of O2. So now they are asking which one is the limiting reagent. Find limiting reagent. How will we do? See, first you need to find moles, okay. But this one is given in mass. So find moles. What will be moles? Moles will be equal to W upon MW. So N will be equal to 32 upon molecular weight of O2 is 32 again. So it is 1, okay, 1. Now, now we have to find out N upon SC for SO2. What is the number of moles given for SO2? 6 moles. So 6 upon what is the stoichiometric coefficient of SO2? 2. So it is equal to 3. Now N upon SC for O2 we need to find out. Number of moles just now we have found out 1 mole. 32 grams is equivalent to 1 mole. So 1 upon what is the stoichiometric coefficient? 1 again. So it is 1. So whose, whose is lesser? O2. 1 is lesser than 3. So this O2 will be our limiting reagent. Okay. So that means what? You can say 1 mole. We have given, given 1 mole of O2. So 1 mole of O2 will react with how many moles of SO2? We can see in the balanced chemical equation. 2 moles of SO2. It is reacting with 2 moles of SO2. So I can say that 1 mole is reacting with 2 moles. So from 6 moles, from 6 moles of SO2, 2 moles have been consumed in the reaction. So how much is left? 6 minus 2 that is 4 moles. So in the reaction mixture, 4 moles of SO2 will be left because that has not been used up and we can see here 1 mole of O2 plus 2 moles of SO2 will give how much of SO3? 2 moles of SO3. 2 moles of SO3. So we can clearly see that in the reaction mixture, in the reaction mixture in the end, what will be our components that will be left? Whichever is limiting reagent that will be not there at all because that has been already consumed. So the excess thing will left will be left re reactant that has been in excess. So 4 moles of SO2 will be there plus the product will definitely be there plus 2 moles of SO3 will be present. So sometimes they can ask you what will be the uh, composition of the uh, mixture after the reaction is completed. So this will be your answer. This will be your answer. So this was all about our limiting reagent. Now one more few more questions we will be doing. For example, let's say we can do this question. Suppose 2H2 plus O2 is giving 2H2. Now we, are been, we have been given with 10 grams of H2 and 64 grams of O2. And they are asking how many moles of water will be produced in this reaction. When these two will be reacted, how many moles of water will be formed. Okay. Now first things first we need to find out the corresponding moles. So weight upon molecular weight of H2 is 2. So this is 5 moles and for oxygen it is 64 upon 32 that will be our 2 moles. Now we will find out N upon SC of H2 which will be equal to 5 upon 2 that is our 2.5 and N upon SC of O2 will be 2 upon 1. This 2 moles upon stoichiometric coefficient that is 1 that will be equal to 2. Now we can clearly see N upon SC of O2 is lesser. So here O2 will be our 
limiting reagent and H2 it will be left in excess. Now once we find out the limiting reagent, now we will go with the stoichiometry taking this as the only information. So now what is given? 2 moles. 2 moles of O2 will be completely reacting. Now from the equation, stoichiometry relation we have seen that 1 mole of O2 will produce 2 moles of H2. 2 moles of H2 that we have seen from the stoichiometry. Now 2 moles of O2 will give how much moles of o H2O? Definitely 4 moles of H2O. 4 moles of H2O. Achha. Now we need to find out let's say H2. How much of H2 is left in excess? So 1 mole of O2 reacts with how many moles of H2? 2 moles. 2 moles of H2. So now tell me 2 moles of O2 will be reacting with how many moles of H2? It will react with 4 moles of H2. So I can say out of 5 moles, 5 moles was given to us initially, correct? 10 grams was given to us. 10 grams is equivalent to 5 moles. So out of 5 moles, 4 moles of H2 has been consumed in the reaction. So how much of H2 is left? 5 minus 4, that is our 1 mole. So if they are asking composition of resulting mixture, then what will be present? Limiting reagent will not present, will be not present. So O2 is not present, we know that. H2 will be present. How many moles? 1 mole. And water will be present. How much of water was formed? 4 moles of H2O. So this will be the composition of the resulting mixture that is there. Now, I hope this particular uh, stoichiometry and limiting reagent is clear to you. Now, there are certain questions which are important. We will be discussing those. The first question is, read the question first, try it on your own. Then we will be solving. What is the question? Assuming that petrol is octane, okay, petrol is octane and has density. So density is given as 0 0.8 gram per ml. For what? For octane. And uh, volume of petrol which is undergoing complete combustion is given. Okay. V is given as 1.425 liters. So, first things first, can we find out that how much of uh, uh, octane is undergoing combustion in mass, in terms of mass, that will be easy. So, density is equal to mass upon volume. So, mass will be equal to density into volume. That will be 0 0.8 into 1.425. This will come in grams. Okay. Now 1.425 again we have to multiply it with 10 to the power 3 because this is in gram per litre ml. So if I want my answer in gram, then definitely this litre I need to convert it into 1.425 into 10 to the power 3 milliliter. Now upon Calculating this, we will get the answer as around 1140 grams. So one data we have deciphered that how much of petrol that is octane is reacting? 1140 grams. Okay, fine. So first then I will write the equation. Combustion means it will react with O2 giving CO2 plus H2. Now here I would like you to know one more concept here that will be very very important. This is a combustion reaction and the generalized formula for combustion reaction is CxHy plus x plus y upon 4 O2 giving x CO2 plus y by 2 H2O. 
now see you can easily balance it very very quickly so here it is 8 is our x 18 is our y so here it is x so here we can put 8 here it is y by 2 y by 2 means 18 upon 2 that is 9 and in O2 how much we will be put, putting 8 plus 18 upon 4 so this is 9 upon 2 so 8 to the 16 so 25 upon 2 so here we can put 25 upon 2 so this is how this is a very important concept it will be uh, required later as well combustion generalized formula okay now so what they are asking on complete combustion uh, will consume x moles of O2 okay so according to the general equation I can say that 1140 grams of what of octane is requiring how many moles of O2 it requires 25 upon 2 moles of O2 okay 2 moles of O2 did I write it correct no this will not be equal to 20 25 upon 2 moles of O2 what will be equal to 25 upon 2 uh, 25 upon 2 moles of O2 the molecular weight of this C8H18 let's find out this is the thing that is given to us okay so if we find out C8H18 mass it will be around 114 grams so we can say that we can say that here 114 grams because in the equation also there is one mole here there is one mole here will be 114 and here will be one mole so we can easily say that one mole of octane is reacting with 25 upon 2 moles of O2 so 114 grams of octane is reacting with 25 upon 2 moles of O2 so 1140 grams that is given to us just now we have found out will be reacting with 25 upon 2 divided by 114 into 1140 so this is 10 this is 5 so that will be 125 moles of O2. Now what is the question? This is an integer type question. So you can see 125 moles of O2 is our x. So x is our 125. So what will be the value of x upon 5? That will be 125 upon 5. That is our 25. So our answer will be 25. I hope it is clear to you next one more question we will be doing before ending this uh, ha, let's do this question one liter of co2 is passed over hot coke okay let's write down the equation first co2 is passed over hot coke and what it is forming 2 co 2 co it is forming very good one liter we have one liter okay after the reaction the volume of the reaction becomes 1.4 liters okay find the volume of co and co2 after the reaction Achha. you can see from the reaction that one liter or maybe one mole let's take it as one mole one mole of co2 will give you two moles of co now let's take the amount of CO2 that is reacting as X. So I can say after the reaction, if X moles, X liters, let's say have been reacted, okay, out of 1 liter, this X liters have already reacted. So what will be left? 1 minus X liter will be left. And if 1 mole of CO2 is forming 2 moles of CO, then x liters will be forming how much liters of CO? 2x liters of CO. So I can say after the reaction, after the reaction, how much of CO2 will be left? 1 minus x liters. And how much of CO will be formed? 
टू एक्स लीटर्स दैट्स ऑल कोक तो विल नॉट बी इन्वॉल्व ओके राइट नाउ द आफ्टर द रिएक्शन वॉट एवर वॉट एवर विल बी द वॉल्यूम ऑफ द रिएक्शन दैट हैज बिन गिवेन एज वन पॉइंट फोर सो आई कैन से वन माइनस एक्स लीटर्स प्लस टू एक्स लीटर्स इज इक्वल टू वन पॉइंट फोर लीटर नाउ वी कैन सॉल्व फॉर एक्स फ्रॉम हियर इट विल बी वन प्लस एक्स इज इक्वल टू वन पॉइंट फोर सो एक्स इज कमिंग एज जीरो पॉइंट फोर लीटर्स सो दिस एक्स वॉज वॉट दिस एक्स वॉज द अमाउंट ऑफ सी ओ टू दैट हैज ऑलरेडी रिएक्टेड ऑलरेडी रिएक्टेड सो नाउ दे आर आस्किंग वॉट इज द वॉल्यूम ऑफ सी ओ एंड सी ओ टू आफ्टर द रिएक्शन सो वॉल्यूम ऑफ सी ओ टू आफ्टर द रिएक्शन वॉज वन माइनस एक्स सो इट विल बी वन माइनस जीरो पॉइंट फोर दैट विल बी अवर जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स लीटर्स एंड वॉल्यूम ऑफ सी ओ सी ओ दैट वॉज फॉर्म्ड वॉज टू एक्स so it will be 2 into 0.4 that is our 0.8 liters i hope you have understood this properly stoichiometry and limiting reagent I, we have done n number of numericals i'll be attaching one assignment as well be all the questions these questions which we couldn't do because of the time constraints so we will practice there and definitely if uh, we get some more time we will be having a practice session number 2 based on this stoichiometry and limiting reagent so that's all for today so that's all for today thank you so much see you in the next class